protest and poetry above language. And I thought, wow, I ran for president. What if I represent like people making under $50,000 a year? Females, queers. If all those people voted for me, I would win. This is Eileen Miles. All throughout history, in times of societal distress and political turmoil, people tend to turn to art. Artists and writers help us document and understand our cultural crises. Eileen Miles is a boundary-pushing, defiant poet, writer, teacher, and trailblazer who does just that. In the midst of the AIDS crisis, when affected communities were mistreated and marginalized throughout the U.S., Eileen used the written word to become an unlikely candidate for the 1992 presidential election. Part performance piece, part serious campaign, Eileen's write-in candidacy helped to shatter the vision of who could be considered for one of the most powerful positions in the world, all while sparking a community of outsiders to demand equal representation in the eyes of the law. I'm Javier Munoz, and this isn't just our history. This is legendary. Reading is a trans experience. Every woman reads men's work all the time as literature. Always becoming male. We know how to understand men because we are men. What I understood suddenly was that men often don't want to transition to being female in order to get what women are saying in their books. I truly feel like I'm the gender of Eileen. The poetry scene seemed to be a lot of white dudes and a lot of straight white dudes. Most of the men that I met who were my generation were straight and, and you know, we were all like drinking and taking drugs and, you know, sort of, in the, you know, litter mates in a way and having sex and pulling around, you know. So it was sort of like when suddenly I fell for this girl and wrote these great poems about that, it was kind of like I just wasn't on that team anymore, you know. And it absolutely, it changed. It changed things for me. Because the thing is, once I started to write with a fuller sense of who I was, I just had more tools. I was just a better writer. You know, it's just like gender is just this endless arrival. I feel like we're all kind of moving through it because of time, because of health, because of age, because of interests. You know, it's sort of like kind of self-discovery. I think the way you're regarded as a queer, LGBT, trans poet, is to witness people always grappling with whether you're theirs or not. I'll be a poet. What could be more foolish and obscure? I became a lesbian. Every woman in my family looks like a dyke, but it's really stepping off the flag when you become one. Protest and poetry are both language. So I feel like they're like, this handshakes back and forth all the time. But you know, poetry is never any one thing or fitting into something or I think even serving something's needs exactly. And I was grappling with my work being political. You are the new Americans. The homeless are wandering the streets of our nation's greatest city. Homeless men with AIDS are among them. Is that right? But I think, I, mean, I think the poet is always porous. And I think in urgent times, poets are just needed more. And are pushed to the front of the line, just kind of unwittingly. It was kind of like the politically correct where anybody who objected, it, it just included, you know, activists, it included people of color, it included queers, it included artists, it included anybody who didn't think that the deal that we were getting in America was, you know, inadequate. Anybody who, who had a complaint and wanted to complain more than once. And I thought, wow, I ran for president. Have we had any progressive presidents? So I thought that what if I represent like people making under $50,000 a year? Females, queers, activists. I mean, there was so many people that I represented, you know, that I thought if all those people voted for me, um, I would win. It was the spring of 91. It was like an endurance performance piece too. It would start then and it had a very organic end, which was November of 92. Taxation without representation is tyranny. We all learned that line in grade school, and we were living that line in, in the 80s and 90s, and certainly in the aughts, and certainly now. Somehow I took that to mean act as if you had already, that you had won. 
is what I decided. So I've written an acceptance speech. Thank you. You know, we don't have a single female on any of our bills. And what about two women, two women loving, or even more? A lot of women, a lot of money. Is there a message I failed to receive that the face of woman cannot be on our money? And so many people came up to me and said, Eileen, I am totally happy to support your campaign. I've never known a presidential candidate before. You know, and they laughed, but they meant it. And they meant it on the deepest level, which was I was their spokesman. And that was really cool. That was really great. We deserve that. And we are really here, undiluted, unmucked up, wide awake in America for once. See the, see the, see all of you, fabulous, beautiful, and your power and your hope. Thanks for your vote. I love you so much. Thanks. To my mind, the only thing I ever have to impart to anybody when I meet a young writer, when I meet a young artist, when I meet somebody who's trying to figure out their life, I just think the thing to notice is what you're doing already. You know, we're all, I think we're always already there. The work of being a poet is getting comfortable with your mind and knowing its doorways, knowing its ins and outs, knowing when you're being clear, knowing when you're being unclear. You just have to kind of validate your own fact and process in existence, and then go ahead. I'm no longer alone, no longer ashamed. I'm not alone tonight because we are all candidates, and I am the president. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Legendary. If you want more, check out the full Legendary playlist and be sure to subscribe to Now This Entertainment. See you next time.